Three years ago, Letitia Fraser disappeared. Now the she's sitting there with y'all. She just slept in there with y'all. We've been out here each and almost every day, passing flies at night, going up and down these streets, trying to find her daughter. Letitia Frazier was a kind, loving and responsible 18-year-old who was working hard at a fast-food restaurant in Washington, D.C.'s, to raise her three-year-old daughter, Diamond. Her family was worried that something was wrong, when she didn't come home, it's not like her to not come home, or the type to leave her little handbag Diamond. On August 2, 2010, Letitia left her job to catch the bus home to her family, when Letitia didn't arrive as expected, her family tried to reach her cell phone, but each time they called, it went straight to voicemail. They contacted the police, and a search party was put on. Four months her family keep searching, never give up hope, until one day an anonymous phone call change everything. That's when they learned about the deadly faith of Letitia Fraser. It's a nightmare you just can't wake up from. The caller didn't identify their self, however they said there was a dispute between Letitia and her friends that led to her disappearance. Letitia knew these people and thought they were her friends. The route. And then when I saw her stomping the route, they pulled me away from her. August 2, 2010, was a normal day as usual. She got up and prepared herself for work. Letitia would usually drop her daughter off at her mom before leaving for work. Letitia has a lot of struggle, but she handled it with grace. When she found out she was pregnant, she wanted to be the best mom and don't want her daughter to end up like her. She had big dreams and having her daughter push her more to achieve her dreams. Letitia lives with her family, they were all very close. Growing up, Letitia was a tomboy, she rather going outside and play sports with the boys, than staying inside, playing with dolls with the girl, has Letitia entered high school, she still retained her tomboyish, but has she age, she slowly becoming more feminine. She loved school, so after she had her child, she went back to graduating high school, after high school, Letitia decided against going to college, she preferred to pursue her dreams of becoming a chef. Letitia moved out of her parents' house and got a job at McDonald's. Even though she's not living with her family anymore, Letitia spoke to them every day. She was very close to them, so they know what her schedule was. She would spend time with her mom and dad every chance she get. On August 2, Letitia shift finish. She went to take her bus as usually, but unfortunately, when Letitia got off the bus, she vanished into thin air. When Letitia never showed up to pick her daughter up, her parents were immediately worried and start calling her, but there were no answer, they immediately knew something was terribly wrong, she never late, she always shows up. Letitia's mom and her sister thought something might have wrong with her phone, so they went on Facebook and sent her message, but she never replied. How can a 18-year-old just vanished without a trace? As days goes by, hope seems distant, and her family were beyond worried, they knew something had to have happened to her, Letitia wouldn't just leave her child behind, she is not that kind of person, she was a good mom, who loves her daughter 100%, it had been two days since Letitia's gone missing. Has her family report her missing, they made it clear that this was not the usual case of a runaway teenager, because Letitia was love and happy, she would never do that, she had a loving daughter that she looked forward to coming home to every day. I feel truthfully that it's foul play because that's not my daughter's character at all, to not get in touch with her mother, especially to talk to her child. Based on the information they received from her family, the detective went to her workplace to speak to her co-workers, who were technically the last people to see her alive. Letitia colleagues spoke highly of her, they said she was a dedicated employee, who never missed a day of work, she never had issues with anyone at work, and the customers loved her, they also told investigators that when Letitia clocked off from work that day, they watched her get on the bus, like she did every day, nothing stood out. The best way to figure out where Letitia went was to retrace her steps, right to the point where she had disappeared. It didn't take long to find the bus she had gotten on that day, as that was usually the bus she take every day. They showed the driver a picture of Letitia and thankfully he remembered her. He told the investigators she had gotten on the bus, but she wasn't alone, she was with a young man that rides the bus with her every day. The driver then gave the detectives an accurate descriptions of the man and they were able to get a sketch artist to make a sketch of him, they showed the sketch to the parents, who recognized him immediately, as Letitia's boyfriend, they often spent a lot of time together. The detective brings in Letitia's boyfriend in for questioning, to see if he know her whereabouts, 
He confirmed he had been on the bus with her that day, after she got off work, but she gotten off at a different bus stop, than the one that would lead her to her mom's house. He said he asked her why she getting off at this bus stop, and she told him she was going to see a few friends before heading to her mom's house, he said he never got off with her, and he never saw her again, he also said. She was supposed to call him, when she got home, like she usually did, but she never did. Though the police didn't believe him because it was a normal case for the boyfriend of husband to be a person of interest, and the fact that, he had been the last person to see her alive. Other people who had been on that bus that day, to collaborate Letitia's boyfriend's story, and also remembered him, many of them confirmed that Letitia had gotten off before him, and he had gotten off at his usual stop, his alibi also checked out, so they were able to cross him off the suspect list, but before they let him through, he told the investigators, that he knew the friends Letitia said she was going to hang out with that day, they were her usual friend group, that she hung out, with, multiple times before. Investigators went to speak with the friends, they confirmed Letitia was supposed to meet with them on that day but she never showed up. It's been days since Letitia went missing, and by this time, the investigators had hit a dead end, up until that point, they had no clue or lead to explore, and the friends assuring that they had no idea where she would have gone, it was more question than answer. While this was going on, Letitia's family decided to help the investigation, by making missing person posters, and pasting them all over the area she was last seen. Almost every day, passing flies at night, going up and down these streets, trying to find her door. The local TV stations had also Shah's story, with a camera team from ABC7, in DC, following her family and friends around, as they passed out flyers. But no matter how hard they searched, it didn't look like they would find her, but Letitia's family never gave up, they kept going back to the neighborhood, where she was supposed to be meeting her friends and speaking to people. Finally, as they were about to give up, Letitia's family came across a woman who lived in the neighborhood. She told them that she saw Letitia at that house multiple times. The neighbor thought the girl was a runaway and he was trying to hide her from her mother. She just slept with me with y'all. She didn't sleep with me. I don't. Family members were back in this neighborhood again today, passing out flyers they had made up in search of 18-year-old Letitia Frazier, last seen. When it looked like the neighbor wouldn't drop the issue, Brian offered to let Letitia family search the house, but they found nothing. Nothing that shows she was there, Brian continued to deny that he knew Letitia, and claiming she hadn't been there that day. Sleep with me. She might have sleep with you, but she didn't been in there. So it's not, it's not a thing that you don't know But, but at the same time, I'm not from around here. I'll tell you, you know that. I don't really know a lot of people He's trying to convince a neighbor who confronted him that he barely knew Letitia Frazier. I don't really know her like that. I don't. The investigators hit another dead end. Investigators spoke more with Letitia friends and family, but they had nothing new to share. The leads had dried up and the case was going cold. She left her job at McDonald's in Temple Hills, Maryland, came through here and disappeared. Didn't pick up her paycheck last Thursday. Didn't come home to see about her daughter, family members said. The investigators were puzzled. How can an 18-year-old step off a bus in a crowded area and disappear? Letitia 19th birthday rolled around and she was still missing. Her family celebrated by pasting more missing flyers of her, still hoping she would be found alive. On January 13, 2011, five months after Letitia went missing, her family received a shocking Facebook message. The message was sent from an account that was created with Letitia's middle name, Monique Frazier. At first they thought it was Letitia, trying to let them know she was okay. But the messages took a threatening tone, and her family knew they weren't talking to Letitia. The person behind the account seemed to know what happened to Letitia, but instead of helping, they were trying to drive fear into her family saying things like, one of them was next, and I'm watching you. The person also let her family know that Letitia was gone forever, and they should stop putting up flyers. Because they would never find her, the messages were quite disturbing, and bizarre, it left Letitia's family with a sinking feeling that their daughter wasn't just missing, she had been kidnapped, and possibly in alive. But why would anyone want to hurt Letitia or her family? Scared and confused, two weeks later they took the message to the police, Whoever sent the message was trying to derail the police, the detective traced the IP address of the account, but the messages were sent from an empty lot, with no more leads, the case was getting colder by the day, but Letitia's family refused to give up, believing their daughter still out there. And ABC7, the TV station that had been following Letitia's family, released the documentary and many people saw it, and started sending in tips, 
Within hours after airing Letitia's story, a witness came forward with information, the witness who had seen Brian gather on TV, and called the police, to let them know he had information about Brian's involvement in Letitia's disappearance, the witness said Brian had bragged to them about taking someone's life, and when they asked him who he and alived, and why, he told them he had an alived Letitia, and that he had done it because she stole money from them, the witness described in detail, how they went about ending Letitia's life. The witness say there were six of them, three boys and three girls, he said the women lured Letitia into the apartment and jumped her, then the boys joined in attacking her severely, Brian then told the witness that he was going to finish her off, at the time the witness didn't believe Brian, thinking he had made the whole thing up to scare them, but when they saw Letitia's story on TV, a chill ran through their spines, and they knew they had to tell someone, after the witness came forward. The investigators took him to the same house Letitia was supposed to have visited, he identified another woman who had been found at the apartment as one of the women involved in the attack, her name Cynthia Proctor. The police took Cynthia down to the station for questioning, and she had a lot to say, in fact she told them everything. She said few days before attacking Letitia, some boys had approached her and said they needed her to jump a girl who had stolen money from them, she agreed to do it, on August 2nd, she went over to the house as planned, and they carried out their plan, she told the police they lured Letitia into the house, and immediately began to hit her, Letitia tried to fight back, but it was three against one, and she soon gave up fighting, when the girls were done, the boys jumped in and start hitting her, they taped a pillow over her mouth to keep her from screaming, and locked her in the closet, while they clean up the crime scene, Cynthia told the investigators that as they were cleaning up, one of the boys told them that Letitia had stopped breathing, she said she didn't know what happened to Letitia's body, as that's where her participation end. Armed with this new information, Brian Gaither was arrested on that same day, Brian suddenly remembered Letitia, he confessed that he had joined in hitting her, before putting her in a choke hold, he said when he left her she was still breathing, but others continued to beat her until she stopped breathing, he then said they kept her body in the apartment, before they dumped her in the apartment dumpster, he said when he went back to look for her she was no longer there. Letitia Frazier was coming home from her job at McDonald's when lured into this apartment in Southeast and six of her so-called friends jumped her, beat and strangled her to death through her body in a dumpster. Brian's confession was so effective, it led the others to also confess, Lawrence Hassan, confess everything, and he had a lot to say, the detective asked why they carried out the horrific act, he repeated everything Cynthia said, he added that they hatched the plan, after Johnny Sweet come to them and said, Someone had stolen $900 from him. There were so many of them who frequented that house, so why Johnny suspected Letitia was the one who had taken his money. At that point, they came up with a plan to lure Letitia to the apartment to punish her. The moment she got there, they told her everyone was hanging out in the bedroom, and she followed them, not knowing what waited for her behind those doors. Lawrence confessed they all jointly attacked her, and when she was within an inch of her life they covered her face with a pillowcase, and shoved her in the closet they then went to hang out in the living room, but they could still hear Letitia moaning. So according to Lawrence Brian went back there to shut her up. By that time Letitia had gone quiet, Brian had put her in a choke hold, and shoved her back in the closet, they left the house to go see a movie. Lawrence said they brutalized her, and Brian Gaither finished her off with a choke hold. Few days later, Johnny was taken into custody, confronted with all the confession of his accomplice, he had no choice but to confess too, it was clear that Johnny was the ring leader of the whole thing, they all follow his orders, it was his money he claimed was stolen, he was the one who insisted Letitia had stolen his money, he was the one who put the sinister plan together, after speaking to all person involved and going over their confessions the police had a full picture of what happened. To Letitia Frazier. According to 16-year-old Johnny, on August 2, 2010, after they brutalized 18-year-old Letitia, and shoved her in the closet, the girls gave the boys massages, while they discussed what to do with Letitia, as if it was just a regular day, and she was nothing, he said after a few hours, they went back to check on her, and that's when they found out she wasn't breathing, they didn't know what to do, so they left her in the closet for two days, while they discussed ways of disposing of her body, without getting caught, one of them slept in the same room Letitia's body was in, he also told them that at first they thought of dismembering her, but none of them could go through with it, so they placed her body in a large container, and threw her in the dumpster, after the confession, police went to the house where Letitia was unalived, and found several pieces of evidence, tying them to the murder, 
they found a red fluids all over the carpet in the bedroom, where Letitia was severely beaten. They also found the same fluid in the closet where she had been placed after the attack. The evidence in addition to all their confession, led the investigator to charge all six of them with murder. Charger 23-year-old Brian Gaither, who was the oldest at the time, Lawrence Hassan was 22, Cynthia Proctor, Lionie Bell, and ring leader Johnny Sweet, who were both 17 years old. The youngest of them at the time, was Anika Nelson, who was 16 years old, all of them were jointly charged. With the murder of Letitia Frazier, investigators had enough to charge them, but all six of them insisted they had put her body in a dumpster, and that meant her body was probably on a landfill, it would be. Impossible to find her, Gaither admitted he threw Letitia's body in a dumpster, and it was hauled to a landfill, usually trying a murder case with no body, is difficult but in this case, everyone except Johnny Sweet pleaded guilty and took plea deals. Gaither admitted he threw Letitia Frazier's body in a dumpster, it was hauled to a landfill and not seen since. The others involved, already pleaded guilty, and were sentenced between 18 and 32 years, the other four were the first to plead guilty, followed by Brian Gaither who pleaded guilty, the moment he discovered the court would not allow that ABC7 tape of him, letting Letitia's mom search the house. Prosecutors said they had planned to use ABC7 news clips against 25-year-old Brian Gaither, who could have faced up to 60 years, but that tape had been particularly damning, because at that time he knew he was letting Letitia's mom into the same house. A guilty plea from the man accused of killing teenager Letitia Frazier. The 18-year-old girl was beaten, her body tossed into a dumpster, and has never been found. Sweet said today, I ain't gonna sugarcoat it. I had a part in it. A life was taken due to a careless decision. Hopefully someday y'all can forgive me. If y'all don't, I can understand. You know, we had to keep out, keep going on for her. You know, we couldn't just let her spirit die because she's not here to speak out to what happened to her. So we had to be that unspoken voice for her. Sweet's plan to leveraged his terrible childhood in court to gain the judge's sympathy, but it didn't work out. That plea or tactics only fell on deaf ears. But the judge gave little consideration to that and sentenced the now 19-year-old to 52 years in prison. On April 2013, Johnny received a higher sentence than the rest of the defendants. Letitia Frazier had a daughter who's now five. My granddaughter, I wish she just, you know, could have her mother, but you know, right now we satisfied with the justice, with what happened today, we, I'm, I'm, I'm satisfied. After three years, Letitia's family finally got justice for their daughter. Justice has been served, so I'm pretty good about that. Since Letitia vanished, her family never had any closure, her body has never been found, and the possibility of finding her is impossible with every passing years. The investigators never found any evidence that Letitia had stolen any money from Johnny. At the end, Letitia suffered a terrible death, for something no one can prove. May her soul rest in peace. Thanks for watching. Please help my channel to grow. Like, share, comment, and hit the bell, so you won't miss a sound when I post.